if you look at this logically, you step back and, and analyze what's being said, the only thing that you conclude is Jesus, peace be upon him, consistently was submitting himself to the will of our Creator. And again, that is the literal definition, the etymological definition of the word. And that's the sense that you Muslims use when we say it. So if you ever hear a Muslim say Jesus was a Muslim, that's exactly what we mean. Jesus was indeed a Muslim. Um, and finally, again, Kenny condemns Jesus by saying that all of this is really confusing. This theology is really confusing. Uh, so he's condemning Jesus for being the source of this theology. And he condemns Allah and Muhammad for affirming seconds. that as the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of Allah. So every time I go here and I go to a clear passage of Jesus claiming that he's the one uh, who will judge everyone at the final judgment, claiming that Jesus is the one who raises the dead, and Muslims say, ah, we don't believe that stuff. You're claiming to know more than your God, and you're condemning your God and your prophet for ordering us to judge by these scriptures that you say are wrong. What comes to my mind when, when we're talking about this is, uh, if we look over at this picture again, and we're wondering if Christians are referring to Jesus, peace be upon him, as the Son of God, that they also consider to actually be God, who 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 would he be praying to if this, in fact, was Jesus, peace be upon him? Obviously, it's not Jesus, but if Jesus is submitting himself and praying to another being, uh, how could he very well be the very being that he's he's praying to. Does this make sense? Or again, does it make more sense that a human prophet, peace be upon him, would have submitted his will to the will of the one who sent him and gave all glory to our creator as he does numerous times in the Bible without one declaration of calling himself God. Um, and again, Muslims don't believe this terminology. You won't find that in the Quran that the you know, it's referencing Jesus anyway, and the Father and so forth. That's not in the Quran. He kind of, um, I think he realizes that. He knows that. So I'm not sure why he's uh, making some of the arguments that he's made regarding, um, uh, you know, Jesus uh, or, you know, me confirming that Jesus was praying to the Father. Um, you know, I believe that our G Jesus, peace be upon him, is submitting to our Creator, our God and his God, our Lord and his Lord. Okay. Okay, oh, 30 seconds. So, uh, so again, when, when we talk about the Quran and he's trying to use the Quran to validate the Bible, again, we're talking about um, the original words that are revealed to the prophets and the messengers as revealed by a creator to the prophets and the messengers, peace be upon them all, in their original form. But, um, and this is not a, a debate about how many versions of the Bible are there are and how many, you know, if, if Jesus is God, we're specifically debating the topic, was Jesus a Muslim by the literal definition of the word? And I, th there's no arguing that. It's a, it's a case closed. So there, Kenny said that the, the Quran is affirming uh, the scriptures in their original form. Uh, totally false. Again, the, the Quran repeatedly says that no one can change Allah's words. The Quran was affirming scriptures that were there in the seventh century. Christians in the seventh century, Christians in the seventh century were ordered to uh, to judge by the gospel. Christians in the seventh century were told that they have no ground to stand upon unless they stand upon the gospel. The Quran, over and over and over again, affirms the gospel as it still existed in the time of Muhammad. So notice. Uh, this is affirming, the Quran is affirming that Christians in the first century had reliable scriptures, second century, third century, fourth century, fifth century, sixth century, all the way into the seventh century, all the way down into Arabia, had authoritative scriptures from God. What's that mean? Well, guess what? We have copies of our scriptures from before that time and after our time. We know what the gospel says. We have, uh, we have plenty, plenty of copies. We have people, uh, commenting on them. We have commentaries, quotations all over the place. We know what the gospel said during that time. That's what Allah tells us to judge by. Um, Kenny uh, asked, uh, who would Jesus be praying to? Again, this is irrelevant for the topic. The question is whether he's a Muslim. Uh, but let me break, let me break down pretty quickly. Um, according to Christian theology, you can reject it, but at least get the theology right. Father, Son, Holy Spirit have existed uh, in a loving relationship for, for all eternity. The Son entered creation as Jesus of Nazareth. Again, you can reject it. But at least get the theology right. The son entered creation as Jesus of Nazareth. Now that he entered creation, is he suddenly going to become an atheist? Or is he going to continue the relationship with the father that he's had from all eternity? And how would he do so if he's taken on the nature of a servant? Through prayer. 
So again, you can say you don't like it. You can say uh, it doesn't make sense to you, yeah. uh, but at least get it right. So back to the Christian dilemma argument. So he's he's have to resort to trying to prove that Jesus is God once again and creating red herring arguments about the, the, the Quran validating the verses of the Bible and so forth, validating the Bible, and that's not even close to being uh, true. So, but if we go back to the question, Jesus, peace be upon him, the human being who was once an embryo who traveled the birth canal, had to, you know, have bowel movements and so forth, mean no disrespect. He was a human being who chose willingly to submit to the will of our creator. The very definition of the word, Muslim. A word or a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Christians readily admit it as he has done so in this debate. So Jesus, we know, submitted his will to the will of our creator, the one who sent him. And it's my intention here today to prove one thing and one thing alone, is that Jesus is a Muslim by the literal etymological sense of the word. And when we say that, um, you know, it should be conceded, the, the, the point should be conceded when Christians themselves use the same terminology through English phrases and will readily admit, because the Bible says so, that Jesus lived in submission to the will of our Creator. We're not here to debate whether or not Jesus is the Son of God. We're not here to debate whether or not the Quran confirms the Bible. We're not here to debate the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're not here to debate those things. We're here to ask, answer the question, who was praying, Jesus praying to? Who was he submitting to? Who is he giving glory to? He was doing that to, he was giving all glory and praise and honor to our God, our creator, our Lord and his Lord, our God and his God. And by the literal definition of the words, what I'm trying to do is argue the fact that when Muslims make claim to Jesus, peace be upon him, we have a right to do so because the consistency of a man defines who he is by the literal definition of this word, Muslim. If you're going to say it in the English language, why can't we say it? In the Arabic language, with one simple word, that's all. That's simply all we're doing. Alhamdulillah. All right. So Kenny again says Jesus is a Muslim. I, again, I grant. I'll, I'll grant if you want to say Jesus submitted to God, um, and you're saying that it's it's in a relevant sense, then fine. If that's what uh, submission means, then Muhammad got it wrong. Muhammad is submitting to God wrong, and Muslims are submitting to God wrong as well. This is just what happens when your prophet affirms someone who completely contradicts uh, his basic teachings and affirms books that completely contradict his teachings and uh, affirms the uh, divine protection of a community that completely contradict his teachings on uh, basic things. Uh, Kenny is still hung up on this idea, whether we're talking about um, Jesus being God, the Son of God. Again, I chose the topic, Son of, if you want to debate the deity of Christ, open to it. I chose the issue of the Son of God specifically because in the Quran, that is a defining, that is the ultimate defining characteristic of someone who is not, who has not submitted to God properly, right? But the Quran affirms that Jesus is sinless. So he couldn't have submitted to God uh, improperly, and he couldn't have been repeatedly committing the worst possible sin. So if Kenny is saying Jesus submitted to God, and the way Jesus submitted to God, as we've seen, is by repeatedly calling himself the Son in a divine sense, the one who judges the world, the one who raises the dead at the resurrection, if that's true submission to God, if that is appropriate submission to God, then the religion of Islam, so the takeaway here is, fine, Jesus submitted to God, and therefore Islam is false. Because Islam says that that way of doing it is not Islam. All right, then. So Jesus submitted to God, and he was a Muslim in some etymological generic sense that proves that the religion of Islam is false and corrupted, and that Muhammad is a false prophet. And I'm fine if you want to leave it there, Kenny. Oh, well, so what's interesting is that, once again, he's tried to, go, he's got to, you know, create these red herrings trying to go to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and try to discredit him. This is typical David Wood antics. But nevertheless, what he did concede when he first started speaking is that he said, I'll grant that submission is, you know, if you want to use it in that sense of the word, I'll grant that, that you know, that he'd be called, he didn't say that he didn't finish the sentence, but he was, in, in, inevitably, he was conceding the point that he knows 
that Jesus lived in submission to the will of our Creator. Now he's trying to create the argument that um, he's, he somehow got it wrong because he's submitting to who? The Father? Well, uh, this is biblical terminology, and uh, but nevertheless, if you if, if if what the Christian dilemma is is that because of this terminology, um, you have one submitting his will to the will of his Creator, and at the same time he's being called the Son of God, and at the same time people are putting together ambiguous verses to imply that Jesus is actually the very God that he's submitting himself to. And it's an ongoing loop of never-ending uh, dilemma for the Christians who has to who have to juggle this in their minds and try to equate when they look at these photos of Jesus, peace be upon him, supposedly hanging in their churches and so forth. No disrespect, but who is he praying to? Is he praying to himself? He's praying to a version of himself. Really, does that really make sense? Or is he just a simple man, one of the best men of mankind? who lived his life in a willing submission to our creator. Uh, and again, he's conceded the point that he knows that Jesus did that. And it's been my objective to clarify what it is that in, in this debate. My only objective is to clarify what it is that Muslims mean based on the video that he produced three months ago, where he was claiming that we mean something that we don't. My only objective was to clarify what our Meaning is when we say Jesus is a Muslim with the literal etymological sense of the word and the consistency, once again, of a man defines exactly who he is. All right. So um, once again, there's no need to defend. I mean, you don't even have to defend the idea that Jesus is the son of God or that he's God, because that's what it means. If you're the son of God in the divine sense, that's your position in the Trinity. All of that is irrelevant. You could say Jesus is claiming to be the son of God and he's insane. But that would mean he's not a Muslim. You could say that Jesus is, Jesus, uh, is only the son of God in corrupt scriptures. But that doesn't work with Islam either because Allah confirms those scriptures. So the point is there's no way out. Kenny just said that they view um, Jesus as one of the best men to mankind. That's the point we're having here. According to Islam, the worst thing you can do is associate a partner with God. When we read the Bible, Jesus called himself the Son over and over again, as did everyone else. So if Jesus is calling himself the Son, he can't be one of the best. He can't be one of the best men ever. He can't be one of the greatest prophets ever. Islam would have to be false. You can't be doing that. Not only that, I would have to say, if you look at the impact Jesus had, that his followers had been worshiping him ever since. So for 2,000 years, I mean, in his own time, they were worshiping him. If this is the impact Jesus is having on the people around him and that he's had down through the ages, then you'd have to say, unless someone came along later and made all that stuff up, you'd have to say Jesus is one of the worst people ever. And yet Islam claims that he's one of the best. This is the point of this entire discussion. Islam is incoherent on this point. It affirms scriptures which claim that Jesus is the son of God, and that's the worst possible sin in Islam, is claiming that you're the son of God. And therefore, Jesus would somehow be one of the worst sinners ever, and yet he's being called one of the greatest uh, prophets ever. No way out of this except deception. Okay, great. So, so no, so let's say Jesus is the son of God. So that would make Jesus, peace be upon him, himself divine. So he is a God submitting himself to and praying to and giving glory to God. Okay, so balance that out in your mind and see if that makes sense. Or does it make more sense that a human being who is just simply a messenger is submitting himself to the will of a God? You put that on the scales and you decide that in your own time. But again, Jesus, peace be upon him, doesn't call himself um, the son of God in the Quran. So Muslims have no problem. The problem is not with us. The problem is the Christian dilemma in that Jesus is submitting to God as the Son of God, who's supposed to be God himself in some capacity in this Trinity concept. And uh, so it's it's an ongoing dilemma. Now, Jesus, peace be upon him, himself, uh, these, these are words according to men, right? We know that these books of the Bible are words according to anonymous authors. And so these anonymous authors are making these proclamations that Jesus used this terminology. 
Do I believe as a Muslim that Jesus referred to our Creator as Father in a literal sense of the word? No, and I don't believe that as a Muslim he would have used this terminology at all. However, the anonymous authors of the Bible have done so. God is not the author of confusion. I agree with that. We as Muslims can accept that, right? But the anonymous authors of the Bible most certainly are because the contradictions are very clear. In the opening statement, I mentioned how could it be that in these very verses where Jesus is over and over and over again submitting to the will of our Creator is also claiming to be the Son of God or God himself in these very, un these very ambiguous verses at the same time? Would, is that a clear message from our Creator that would make sense? No, it is not. It would be unjust for our Creator to give this type of a message versus, Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God is one Lord. That's a clear statement that we can rely upon and, and make a clear, a clear conscious, uh, have a clear conscious understanding of. Kenny just called Allah unjust. He said it's unjust for our Creator to give us this uh, confusing message. What does Allah tell us Christians to go by? Th this confusing message. This is what we're commanded to judge by. This is what we are commanded to stand upon as our scripture. Uh, again, in, in the relevant passage in, in Surah 5 of the Quran, Jews came to Muhammad to judge a dispute. Allah's response is, no, they need to go back to the Torah. That's their revelation. That's not The, the, the Quran is not for them. And then just a few verses later, let the people of the God, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. We are supposed to judge by the gospel that Kenny says uh, is anonymous and we can't trust it. Kenny says he doesn't believe that Jesus used this terminology. He doesn't believe that Jesus used what terminology? The terminology in the gospel that we have that his God affirms. He's talking about confusion. He's talking about God wouldn't God wouldn't be this confusing. Why would God order, why would your God order us to judge by our book that says these things? Isn't that as confusing as anything can possibly be? If your God orders us to judge by a book that says over and over and over again, like a beating drum, that Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead, and he doesn't mean it, that would be as confusing as anything else in all of history. Um... So, uh, you've got a, you've just got a problem here, Kenny. If Jesus is a mere human being, even a prophet, as you claim, then Islam is false because Jesus went around claiming to be the Son of God. He would be very, very bad for claiming, for claiming that about himself if he was not that. If he wasn't the Son of God, he would be bad for claiming to be the Son of God. And so Islam would be false. The alternative is that he is the Son of God, in which case Islam is false. How are you going to get around that? Say, oh, the scriptures have been corrupted. Then Islam is false because the Quran affirms our scriptures. There's no way out, ladies and gentlemen. Was Jesus a Muslim in any relevant sense? No. If you want to go etymological sense and say he truly submitted and that's good, great. Then Muhammad's a false prophet because uh, Muhammad contradicted the true submission of Jesus. Very great. Okay. So, yes, the Quran, alhamdulillah, the Quran does indeed say, for the Jews and the Christians to judge by their scriptures. Now consider what's been stated so far. We've addressed uh, contradictions within those scriptures. We've addressed the anonymous authors of those scriptures. And if you do, do any research on your own, you'll literally find that there are literal dozens of versions of the Bible, not just, not just translations. We're talking about different versions with different numbers of books and so forth, missing passages and some, some that are added and some, some that are not in others. Therefore, judge by what's been revealed in your scriptures. Uh, what Judge by your scriptures, and should that not create a problem for you? When in those scriptures, we have Jesus, peace be upon him, submitting his will to our creator. And in those scriptures, you have to take these ambiguous statements that are being made to try to suggest that Jesus is the son of God and also God himself with all this, this, this you know, the contradictions that, that exist uh, in various places. Uh, so, yes, judge by your scriptures. Do exactly that. Put it on the scales of logic and reason and decide for yourself. Don't, don't just rely on what the, the preacher is saying on Sunday morning on Wednesday night. Be a reader instead of a repeater. Don't just repeat what you've been told over and over again. Be a reader instead of a repeater. Because what happens is most people, because it's easy, most people don't like to read. It's a lot easier just to go and listen to what the preacher man says on Sunday morning and just roll with that. Because mom and dad have been telling you the same thing since you was a little kid. They also told you about Santa Claus. He didn't exist. But the fact of the matter is, be a reader instead of a repeater. Uh, 
uh, put these things on the scale in your own mind. Think logically for yourself. Does it make sense that Jesus, peace be upon him, who's praying to another as his God, is actually God himself? And that's not even the, the you know, the, 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 what it amounts to is that Jesus is in that prayer. He's submitting himself in that prayer to another. And, uh, you know, that's that makes him a Muslim again with the literal etymological sense of the word. Well, it's actually uh, awesome that Kenny agrees that Allah orders us to judge by our scriptures, even though he clearly says that repeatedly. You find that in the Quran. Uh, you find that in the Hadith. In fact, the, in, in, uh, in Sunan Abu Daud, Muhammad tells the Jews to bring him a copy of the Torah. And he says, to the copy of the Torah, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. And then he puts the Torah on this judgment seat and tells the Jews that, that the Torah is their judge. Muhammad also says uh, in Jamia Termini that, that Jews and Christians have the Torah and the gospel in the same way that Muslims have the Quran. It makes no sense if it's been corrupted. And so it's very clear that Allah orders us to uh, judge by and live by our scriptures, and but it's just it's just strange to hear a Muslim admit what the Quran so obviously says. So hats off to Kenny for that. Um, but then Kenny says, "Yeah, but once you judge by your scriptures, you're going to be uh, you're going to be confused." Well, that's interesting. So so he says God is not the author of confusion in the sense that God's not going to confuse you by this stuff, and yet His God orders us to judge by these things that Kenny says are very confusing. I have to say, I don't find don't find it terribly confusing. It's confusing in the sense of hard to get your mind around. But yeah, all kinds of things are like that. Um, does Jesus submitting to the Father cause a problem for Christians? No, that is foundational to Christian theology. There is no Christianity without the doctrine of the incarnation. There's no, there's no Christianity without that. It's foundational to Christianity. Why is Kenny acting like this is all somehow shocking news to us? Um, as for dozens of versions of the Bible, I still don't, I still don't know what he's talking about, but if he, he, he mentioned that there are uh, textual variants and things like that. Uh, if that's a problem, if that's a problem, uh, fine, there are textual variants in the history of the Quran. Muhammad's followers couldn't even, Muhammad's uh, uh, companions couldn't even agree on what was supposed to go into the Quran. Uh, Ibn Masud had 111 chapters in his. Ubay ibn Kab had 116 chapters in his. The authoritative version now has 114 chapters. We open up the Muslim sources. Sahih Muslim says that two entire chapters were lost because Muslims hardened their hearts and didn't, didn't keep reciting them. Uh, large passages came up missing because the only ones who had them uh, died in battle. And even in the world today, you go to different parts of the world today, you have different, uh, they're called the different, you're called the Kirat, but you have different Qurans in different parts of the world. So if this is a problem and this is all confusing, uh, then Islam is confusing once again. And, uh, Kenny, you got, you get, you got some problems here because the topic is whether Jesus was a Muslim and Islam looks like is crumbling. <laughs> you, you, you can say that, but that doesn't make it a reality, David Wood. These are, these are just tactics that he does, uh, consistently, but nevertheless, uh, when, when the, back to the Quran saying to judge by your scriptures in regards to the story about the Jews and so forth bringing the Torah to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were trying to entrap the Prophet and trying to see what he was going to say about um, the punishment that they were planning to invoke on uh, some people and trying to see what his uh, stance was going to be on it. And he told them quite clearly, judge by your book, judge by your book. I believe in what's been revealed here. You judge by it. And the same thing we're saying. We know what's been revealed in your books, but you judge by it. You, you put it on the scales in your own mind and weigh these for yourself. Each Every every individual listening to this debate now and in the future, you put all of this on the scales of logic and reason and ask yourselves uh, by the, and, and, you know, ask yourselves by the literal etymological sense of the word Muslim, one who submits to God. I've given sources for this, this uh, definition, uh, about six of them uh, during the course of this debate, my opening statement. Does that balance out? Well, yes, one who submits themselves to God would by definition be a Muslim in the etymological sense of the word. That's the topic of the debate. That's what I came here to prove, and that's been proven today. Um, now, we have to resort to the Christian dilemma and try to go back and attack the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and trying to uh, validate the Quran with the, I mean, the Bible with the, the books of the Quran. When if you keep reading the verses of the Quran, we don't have time to go through all this in, in this debate. But we can certainly set up another debate about whether or not the Quran validates the Bible. And we'll see clearly in that debate, I assure you, because truth is made clear from falsehood, the Quran does not validate the Bible. As a matter of fact, it warns Christians and Jews about all 
altering their, their verses and so forth. And, um, and we see the evidence of that, by example, of the multiple versions that I mentioned, and that's another, another topic as well, but we don't want to get off on a red herring on that. Uh, go ahead, David. So after, after saying that the Quran does command us to judge by our scriptures, Kenny now says the Quran doesn't validate our scriptures, which is weird because, again, Allah says that he revealed our scriptures. He says that we still had the Torah and the gospel uh, during the time of Muhammad. Um, says that no one can change his words, no one can alter his words, uh, says that the Torah and the gospel were still authoritative over Christians and Jews during his time. In fact, if you read the Quran, very different from the perspective you get from Muslims today. The perspective you get from Muslims today is um, the Torah and the gospel have been corrupted and therefore everyone has to, has to use the Quran. Not the position of the Quran. The position of the Quran is that the Arabs were the last people to get their revelation. And once the Arabs had their revelation, now everyone had their revelation. Everyone has had their prophets. Muhammad is the seal of the prophets because he was just last. That's the perspective. So the Quran is tells other people to go back to their scriptures. You, you Christians, you judge by your scripture. You uh, Jews, you judge by your scripture. Uh, Muslims, we judge by the Quran. Everyone's got their scripture. People eventually found out, as we're seeing here today, that the, the Torah and the gospel just don't line up with the Quran. And so later Muslims were forced to say, ah, the scriptures have been changed, even though that completely contradicts what both Allah and Muhammad repeatedly declare. So there's no way around it. And by the way, you said you'd be willing to debate what, whether the Quran affirms the Bible. That was the topic I suggested. You said you know you'd rather debate uh, whether Muhammad, wa, uh, whether Jesus was a prophet, I mean, was it was a Muslim. And uh, happy to do that, but you can't you can't get away from the fact that your scriptures affirm the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our scriptures. As far as Jews and Christians twisting the scriptures, that is a condemnation. Says we, Surah three, verse seventy eight. Says we twist the scriptures with our tongues and so on. Uh, that doesn't mean the text has been corrupted. I mean, there are Muslims. There are obvi if you're a Muslim, you obviously believe that there are Muslims who twist the scriptures with their tongues. You wouldn't say that means that the that the, uh, the Quran has been corrupted. And so your book affirms our book, warns us not to twist our scriptures. Well, great. We don't need to twist our scriptures to see that over and over and over again, Jesus calls himself the son of God, which would be the worst possible sin in Islam and therefore not what Muhammad meant by Islam. So I was, I was never uh, notified. You didn't notify me about the different topic as a matter of fact so maybe but that's uh, what i suggested yeah so i yeah so i was okay but no it's cool anyway so i, I would so you james <laughs> shame on you but anyway so i wouldn't i wouldn't uh, he might have asked us for both topic for what topics we want he might have just said what you want yeah i never us. i've never okay. seen the other topic but nevertheless we can we can we can go down that road but again judge by your scriptures yes judge by your scriptures and you cannot change the words of our creator the original words given to the prophets and the messengers Peace be upon them all. Um, and so uh, what, we're, what we're dealing with when it comes to the books of the Bible, we're dealing with the words of Allah, our God, our creator. Whatever whatever word you want to use for our creator, our creator, the words of our creator as revealed to the prophets and the messengers, we all believe that that transpired. And we believe that the original words that he gave them can't be altered and so forth. However, the books of the Bible aren't that. The books of the Bible are words according to men. Men pin these these verses down. Now, yes, men wrote wrote down verses of the Quran, but also memorized the verses of the Quran. Right. So that's why Allah has promised in the Quran, by example, to to protect the Quran until the day of judgment in the memory of the minds of the Muslims. So yes, the the, the Quran is the 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 example, matter of fact, of Allah proving that His word cannot be changed. Although the Christians and the Jews beforehand had their, their, their scribes and so forth and people making these claims and these anonymous authors did indeed write things with their own hand. And that's what the Quran clearly warns Christians about in the Quran. So, uh, so, so yes, you can't change the original message of our creator, but uh, obviously these words according to men aren't the original words of our creator. So uh, the book that we're commanded to judge by and kenny acknowledged that we're commanded to judge by it uh he now says it's a these are the words of men uh men this is very interesting and, and the quran is only affirming some original again not what the quran is saying 
it would be very easy. It would be the easiest thing in the universe for Allah to say, hey, I, uh, I inspired your original books, but then you corrupted it. It would be very easy. How hard is that? I just said it. If that's what Allah really meant, then he is a horrible, horrible communicator. Because when he went to say, what he wanted to say, according to Kenny, was, hey, your books have been corrupted, uh, go with the Quran or something like that, or, or just find the, the parts that line up with Islam. Uh, if that's what he meant, and it comes out, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. Christians and Jews, you have no ground to stand upon except the gospel and the Torah. If what he really meant is what Kenny is saying, hey, don't trust those words of men, and it's coming out, judge by your book, you've got the word of God, no one can change Allah's words, then Allah is simply a really, really, really bad communicator. And it's just uh, it's just weird because every debate we have, I mean, in our in our debates about Muhammad and Aisha, I'm the one defending the, the reliability of hadith passages. And here we are, and I'm the one who has more respect for Allah's statements than Muslims do. Allah says, judge by the judge by the gospel. Okay. You say, David, what does Allah mean there? Sounds like he means judge by the gospel. You ask a Muslim what he means, ah, he means the opposite of what he's saying. The, your, your book's been corrupted, your book's been written by man. Don't trust it, you need the Quran. The opposite of what he says over and over and over again. So we're just in this uh, odd situation, <laughs> this odd situation where, where D. Wood is once again the champion of defending the clarity of the Quran. So David Wood is very confused and takes everything out of context regarding the Quran. Uh, so if you would, I challenge everyone listening right now to get your own copy of the Quran, translation of the Quran. Read it in the English language so you can understand. I recommend the clear Quran. That way it's uh, in you know, it's a language that anyone can comprehend. Read it for yourself. Judge for yourself. Be a reader instead of a repeater. Don't just listen to words from people like David Wood, who's got a very large following and so forth, who is very convincing in his arguments and so forth. I challenge you to grab a Quran, read it for yourself. Don't burn it. Don't poke holes in it and all those things like they like to do in their mockery. Read it for yourself. Challenge yourself. Read it for yourself. Be a reader instead of a repeater. Uh, but again, if you if you read these books, um, and this is not what the topic is. So now we've we've gone down this red herring trail here when we've already. I, I believe we're doing so because I believe we're conceded the fact and the point of the debate, which is that we know that Jesus, by the literal etymological sense of the word, was submitting His will to the will of our Creator. That's been established. That was my goal here in this debate. That goal has been accomplished. So, uh, but if you, if you, um, we don't have time to, to debate the, whether or not the Bible is corrupted and whether or not the, the Quran has validated it or not. If he wants to do that, we'll set it up. We'll make that magic happen. Uh, but that's not what we're here to, to argue. So I, I want to try to get back on track about what the original argument of this debate is. In the Bible, Jesus is submitting himself as uh, uh, Gautier says about the uh, book of John in particular, the most, uh, frequented book of the Bible where Jesus, you know, Christians go to try to prove Jesus is not just the Son of God, but God himself. Forty-seven times he's living in submission to the will of God. Not one verse of that uh, of that book of John says unambiguously that Jesus is God or, or and so forth. So put that on the scales once again, and you judge for yourself. Well, I'm glad Kenny called me convincing. Uh, it's interesting, Kenny, Kenny challenges everyone to read the Quran. On the topics we're dealing about right now, uh, I, can actually, uh, I can actually help everyone. So if you want to, we're discussing what, what the Quran says about our scriptures. Keep in mind, this is very, this is not a side point. This is pretty foundational. If Allah tells us to go to the scriptures that confirm that Jesus is the Son of God, then if Kenny says he's a Muslim, then, then that is correct submission to God. Islam would be false. So this is actually... Uh, very important. But if you want to take Kenny's advice and read what the Quran says, you can read it all the way through. It's disorganized, so I can help uh, bring a little clarity here. You, you can go to every single passage in the Quran that so much as mentions uh, the gospel. That's Surah 3, verse 3, Surah 3, verse 48, Surah 3, verse 65, Surah 5, verse 46, Surah 5, verse 47, Surah 5, verse 66, Surah 5, verse 68, Surah 5, verse 110. Surah 7, verse 157, Surah 5, for, uh, Surah 9, verse 111, Surah 48, verse 29, and Surah 57, verse 27. Look up all those passages. Find me one single word of criticism. Find me one single word even suggesting or hinting 
that our scriptures have been altered. All you ever find is Allah affirming the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our scriptures. And therefore, if we look at this, we have to conclude that our scriptures are authoritative, as good as gold. We go to our scriptures. What do we find? Jesus is the divine son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. Therefore, Islam is false. If you don't want us to conclude that, fine. The Quran is wrong for telling us to judge by our scriptures. Either way, Islam is just wrong. And so the ultimate takeaway of all of this is there is no coherent Islamic position on the life of Jesus. Islam affirms him and yet completely contradicts the things that he did. And because of that, Islam simply self-destructs.